Welcome to the Kalispell Warhawk Dynasty, everybody, and the awaited recruiting special for Season 6 of the Dynasty. We've had a successful start to this year with a 4-1 record, but now it's time to look ahead to recruiting and the potential future of this program. The Warhawks have a really strong roster right now, but some of our key players are going to graduate after this year, including quarterback J.R. Battle, running backs Roscoe Sheridan and Corey Miller, and wide receiver Ja'Cory Day. With the success we've had in recent years, I thought it was time for us to start going after some of the higher tiered prospects that are 4 and 5 stars. That approach this year was not successful with a lot of wasted time recruiting players that never had interest in coming to Kalispell. Therefore, I think this recruiting class might be disappointing in comparison to years past, especially last season. But that does not mean that we are not prepared to add some great young talent to this team. So as always, I have teamed up with Blackjack to create this recruiting special. He will introduce to you many of the prospects on our board, and then I'll return after his segment and go through our entire recruiting board and our plan for this year's recruiting season. Year six of the recruiting trail, and it's crazy to think that we've already gone through all the original members of this Kalispell team who started from day one and now we're already past year two's pr uh, prospects in some ways with Ja'Cory Day, Roscoe Sheridan, and Kelly Jean Charles ready to graduate this year. And after last year, we had one of probably the most, if not the most successful recruiting efforts that we've had in a long, long time, or probably in all of school history at this point. So this year, here are the prospects that I brought in and the prospects that I thought that we'd have shot at. I don't know if this year, though, we're going to be as successful as we were last. Let's start out in Spokane, Washington with Reno Springs. Yes, a brother of Juno Springs from the same high school as Ja'Cory Day. This is a school where we won one battle and lost one with Reno going to Wazoo. I really, really like this kid. He's a little undersized at 5'9 at corner, but has a lot of effort really really goes after it in uh, zone coverage a little weak in man coverage and is a press coverage specialist look at him here taking away what should have definitely been a, a touchdown on a much taller receiver he's a very solid tackler even though he gets beat at times and that's going to take a little bit of development a little bit more work in order for him to improve that but he's definitely a bit of a ball hawk and makes big plays in the return game as well uh he also had a big role on offense with the rams this year you can watch him here making a, a, a catch here on offense out as a wide receiver. Nice deep ball there, showing good hands. And here he is being utilized as a running back. Kind of in the same way that Ja'Cory Day was used a little bit, except Ja'Cory Day never played defense until he became a Kalispell Warhawk and got his first ever interception last year. Probably my favorite prospect on the board and I think can be a solid corner. Maybe you have to sit him out the first year, but still a guy that I'm very high on. Back home in Kalispell, again, the pool has not really increased that much since last year. And the big name that we're looking at is Antoine Knightley at receiver. AK-47 really, really helping to improve himself during the Jean Charles family camp this year, which is kind of sad to see nowadays with no more members of the Jean Charles family in it. But Antoine Knightley has really tried to improve on his route running this year. Has gotten a lot of work in there with Remy in order to improve that part of his uh, aspect of his game. And again, we've seen wide receivers be very successful at this camp. Hands still need a little bit of work, especially when he's going up against traffic as he's had some troubles hanging on the ball this year. But that big frame of his is really what we're after. And I think that we can improve upon what his weaknesses are over time. Uh, now, the thing that I think Antoine wants to look for when I went to go sit down and talk with him is playing time. Now, that's not something that he's going to get right away. But if he is patient and allows time for him to develop, I think that he'll appreciate sitting out that first year and really getting better as a receiver. I, I'm very, very high on him. And look at him here in the end zone is a big end zone threat going up there, jump ball, tapping both feet down and catching the ball at its highest point. Very high on Antoine Knightley. And I think that he can serve as your big play end zone receiver in the future. Next up is Sung Ho Kwok, who is still kind of an intriguing prospect to me. He's working a lot on his accuracy, and he's shown that he's been a pretty accurate, for the most part, quarterback. 
The problem that I'm having with watching Sung Ho in his highlights is that he doesn't have a lot of velocity and power in his arm. The strength of his game is his ability to run and be more of a spread option quarterback. I think he does very well in read. So you can watch the throw there where he's throwing to the back of the end zone and his arm just isn't strong enough to get there when the receiver releases. Again, here's a forced throw here to Antoine Knightley when he's trying to look for him and instead he just throws it straight into coverage. Watch it there. Yeah, I mean, that's a, a that's pretty essentially triple coverage there and he throws it right in. Here, again, another play where that route is breaking. Antoine Knightley does the right thing because he throws up field. He lobs it to him, but again, when you're lobbing like that, you're giving the corner time to go ahead and recover, and sure enough, the corner makes the interception here. Again, this is where Quack is deadly. He's allowed to run as he goes in for the touchdown there, and when you put him out in space, you allow him to get outside of the pocket and then make a wide open throw like that. That's the strength of his game, and I think that's what he's gonna have to rely on. Uh, there have been talks about possibly getting Quack to be a bit more of a running back they have an interesting guy there who's a sophomore right now who maybe Kalispell can use a little bit more as a throwing quarterback and that's where things begin to change for Rock. and then if he wants to come to Kalispell next year maybe there's a little bit more versatility and things that we can do with him but right now he's kind of determined to play that quarterback role we'll see uh, come next year if he's actually what we want moving forward or if we can find some different uses for him Billings always seems to deliver the goods when it comes to defensive players. They got another special guy there, Chase Rourke at defensive end. He's at about 6'2", 290-ish. So he's got a really, really big wide frame. He's a bit of a bull rusher, can really, really bring the heat and lay on huge hits on quarterbacks. I've seen him go ahead and just uh, right here on this play, for instance, just shove defense, uh, sorry, offensive tackle straight into the quarterback, then leading the quarterback to realize he doesn't have that much of a pocket, and then the other side of the line going ahead and finishing off the job. Creates a lot of pressure, very strong. He's probably one of the best defensive lineman prospects that I've seen, and according to rankings across the nation, he's at about number 30 in terms of defensive ends. Chase Work, I think, can be really good in about two or three years and be a solid player, and added bonus, Kid wants to stay home, so this should be an easy recruiting battle win for us. Let's go ahead and get it Chase. Should really help beef up that defensive line and add some depth. There's also a tight end down there at Justin Colbert's old high school in Polson. His name is Keenan Gabbard. He's uh, an interesting guy because last year I really wasn't all that impressed by him. I heard some rumblings about him. They have him ranked at about 50 in the 50s nationally. But from what I saw from him in these games, uh, he's actually got some pretty decent hands, shows some pretty decent route running, and there you see him lay out big time for that catch. This could help us add some depth at tight end. He seems like a very decent receiving threat, and I think that's a very good compliment to have next to someone like Hayden John Charles, who can go ahead and do everything in terms of blocking and catching. Uh, he wants to stay close to home, I think we're in a bit of a battle with Nebraska for this one, but hey, let's reach out and try to see if we can pull him in. One of the biggest disappointments recruiting-wise this time around was when I got back to Florida. Uh, a lot of the prospects that I went down there to look at were not showing much interest at all in Kalispell, and there was one guy that I thought, okay, maybe we can actually take a look at here because we're getting short at corner and we really need a playmaker. Raekwon Underwood was that guy, and I was definitely looking forward to see if we can at least bring him in for a visit so that he can see the talent that we have here and see the program that we're building up and then he immediately committed to go to Arkansas. So he's immediately lost to the SEC. Uh, that's a recruiting battle I wish we could have won because he's a special, special cover corner. Uh, maybe we can go up against him sometime in the future and show him what he missed out on. It does seem, however, that we are getting another defensive tackle from Florida this year if we can stay in this race with Jaquan Cunningham, who I really like. That big 350-plus pound frame of his, He's bullying the, uh, the offensive linemen all over the place, and he's very effective in the run game. He clogs holes. He's the guy, kind of guy that you can put perfectly with Boogie Turner. What a nightmare that would be, having Boogie Turner to your left, Jaquan Cunningham to your right, and then having to figure out who are you going to dedicate to those two guys who can wreak a lot of havoc. I did, however, find possibly a solution to us in the secondary out in California. It's Jamari Akinjide. He is a strong safety quarterback 
kick returner, punt returner out there in Oakland, a new high school that I found out there. He runs a triple, op- or he runs or plays in a triple option offense where he is the quarterback, but I think his biggest asset and where I think he will be the most useful with that 6'3 frame of his is that strong safety. He does a great job in coverage, shows great range, even though they run a 3-3-5 defense and at times run with three safeties. But where I think he's the best is in his tackling ability and his ability to be used as a rusher, almost kind of as another linebacker out there. Very versatile player, and I think he could possibly be the best secondary player that we bring in. We're in competition for him. Let's go after him. Oakland did play Our Lady of the Valley, which means that we do need to talk about Aiden Spithill, the running back there from last year. His brother was the number two middle linebacker in the nation, but Aiden has gone and slimmed down this year and gone to take on his brother's number two uniform. Uh, He's actually become a lot better as a receiver, slimmed down to kind of help his agility, and with the popularity of guys like Alvin Kamara and Christian McCaffrey, he's wanted to go ahead and improve his value as a running back and show that he can do a lot of different things and, and kind of improve upon the player that he already is. I think that he could be very valuable and a nice, complete, all-around back for this Kalispell team if he does show the interest here. I think if we win this battle with Jamari and continue to improve our presence in California, he could be our guy next year. But I did want to try to find a running back for this year, and I thought I did here in Fareed Wilder. However, I was actually very disappointed in my visit overall this year in Ohio. We can't get anything from there this year, and again, we struggle. I think this is a uh, state that we give up on, even though we wanted to try to in the past to become a pipeline state for them. They do have some great offensive lineman talent and some great defensive players there, as we got Xavier Bozeman last year. But... Again, Fareed Wilder, a great guy, Not doesn't have the speed of Roscoe Sheridan, but a lot stronger and finishes off runs a lot better than him. Small hands, which does make me worry about his catching ability and how, how well he'll hang on to the football. But as you've seen in his runs here, he finishes off a lot of tackles. He'll run through a lot of guys. He'll stiff arm and bring down a lot of guys. You have to have two hands on him if you have any hope of bringing a guy like that down. And I thought that he would have been a great guy to have there in the backfield with us. But again, no interest. So it seems like we're not getting him. As a matter of fact, like I said, give up on Ohio because the other two prospects that I really wanted to get here from Hartsville Prep, no interest whatsoever. That also includes the number one center in all of America, LaDante Ellis, who I thought after such a strong offensive lineman recruiting class, this would be a chance for us to actually go out and get one. But we won't get him. We won't be getting Daniel Constantine either, a very powerful left tackle who I thought we'd have a really good shot at as well. A very good run blocker, decent in pass protect. But nope, no such luck this time around. I say we bail out of Ohio. There was two other prospects from states that we don't normally go to that I wanted to take a look at. But unfortunately, they really didn't show much interest and it didn't make much sense for me to go out there and actually go and meet with them if there were no interest to come to Montana whatsoever. Shea Somerville, the number three quarterback in all of America, a guy that I thought maybe can fix that uh, quarterback hole that we're kind of in right now where we're not really sure what we want to do in the future. He's a good balance of both running and passing quarterback. Uh, I thought that would have been an interesting guy to look at since we still haven't gotten to that level of getting a top tier quarterback quite yet. And then Theodore Bloom from Tempe, Arizona at 5'11", 224, A little undersized and big in terms of his weight, and I thought could have been an interesting fit as well. However, not looking to come this way towards Kalispell, so I kind of gave up on that one. That's the recruiting front for this year. Hopefully next year, uh, a better batch, a better group of guys that we can look at and have come in. It seems like it might be a little bit of a down year this year, but hey, we put together a great year last year, and maybe next year is when we can recover and do a lot better. So obviously things aren't as exciting as they were last year. I tried going after a lot of higher rated prospects like I mentioned, there were only a few players in the top 100 that had interest, yet we tried to go after others and try to develop some interest and that was a challenge. So for players like Jordan Jones, Josh Lane, Eric Ashley, among others, we just couldn't get battles established there, so we've had to really just 
go in a completely different direction partway through the beginning of the recruiting season. That's not to say we don't have a good chance to find some good players, it's just that I know many wanted to see higher rated prospects come to Kalispell, but that's not going to be happening in the near future. Dion George was a great athlete, I thought we had a chance to recruit, he had a lot of interest, but clearly Wisconsin has captured all of the interest here, and that's pretty much a done deal. But let's take a look at the prospects that Blackjack introduced to us and talk about how they can fit into our team. Juno Springs is a great cornerback. We didn't fit with what he wanted, but we showed the most interest. He's undersized. He's not blazing fast. He can be a good, like, Tampa 2-style corner, a zone corner that can sit underneath and make some plays. He does have some physicality in his game. He does have an offer from Washington. Here's LaDante Ellis from Ohio, which has become a really hard state to recruit in, and I decided to still push hard for Ellis as the number one center in the nation. I'm putting way more effort into building up the offensive line, and I want players like Ellis to help be a part of it, but he has so many offers on the table, and no one's really separating themselves, so this race is a long way to go. Jamari Akinjide is one of my favorites at 6'3", 211 pounds from Oakland. He really likes that he could get some early playing time here with Kelly John Charles graduating after this year. I see him being a very effective box safety. He has four offers on the table, but it looks like a two-team race between us and Cal. He just visited Kalispell this last week. Jaquan Cunningham is who I want to talk about next. As I look ahead to the future of our defense, I see Boogie Turner, and I love to have a nose tackle type of player like Cunningham next to him that can take up a lot of space and collapse the pocket. Interior rush is so valuable if you can get it. Next up, Antoine Knightley from here in Kalispell, 6'3", 214. He would want to go to a higher profile school, it would appear, but we are showing the most interest. He has incredible leaping ability, and I think in the red zone he can be very valuable, but I'm not sure he'll play early in his career. He has one offer, and it's from us, and I expect us to win this battle. We have a battle for Chase Rourke between us and Utah. He's a big defensive end, and he's another player that we can use to collapse pockets and make things tough on opposing quarterbacks. Again, he'll have to develop for a while, but he has great athleticism to go with his size, and I think he could be kind of a jack-of-all-trades defensive end once he develops fully. At tight end, I'd love to find a field stretcher that can complement Hayden John Charles. Keenan Gabbert can fill that role in some ways. He's not the most dynamic speed threat at tight end, so I'm not sure if he would be a long-term answer for that position. Now let's talk about the rest of the prospects on our board, and there are some four and five stars here, just not many. But in North Dakota, there's one of the best athletes in the country, Brandon Warren, who can do so many different things. He can play quarterback, he can play a running back, receiver. I like him most as a wide receiver with excellent route running, good hands, and run after the catch ability. He is only 5'11", but the receiver skills are undeniable. There are three teams that have offered scholarships so far, us, Nebraska, and Tennessee, and we're going to be aggressive in this race. We're also going for four-star receiver from Idaho, Carl Joyce. So finding some great talent in places you wouldn't always expect. And Joyce is a big play threat. He's very fast, runs good routes, but you're just never 100% sure if he's going to make the catch. Think Ted Ginn, Will Fuller, he's that kind of player. He's not going to make you miss, but he has the speed to run past you anyway. Next in Florida, there's a guard Cameron Collins I'm interested in, but we're battling the U, so we'll see how that goes. He is looking to go to a championship contender and wants to stay close to home, so that sounds like the University of Miami to me, but we're still going to show a lot of interest and hope to keep a strong pipeline in the state of Florida. Going to the secondary now, Marquise James from Louisiana in a two-team race between us and Texas A&M. He's a free safety that might fit better as a strong safety. His cover skills are not great. He can tackle and hit pretty well, but he's going to need to develop into a more complete safety to become a starter. Then there is Ernest Walker from Los Angeles, California, the number 25 safety in the nation. He has decent speed, very good acceleration. He can also hit and has more coverability. 
than Marquis James. And I know that that isn't a lot of prospects to talk about. I'm going to be scouting more players that are like strictly within pipelines that we don't need as much time to recruit. It was just, I thought we could get more aggressive this year and it wasn't the case. So I sim past that week and now you're seeing what direction all these battles are moving in. And most of them are in the right direction for us. But for players like Ladante Ellis, that might be tough. Jamari Akinjide got even more difficult. I think we are in good shape for Juno Springs. Cameron Collins favoring the University of Miami even more so. I know this is not a lot of prospects to be talking about right now, so expect a lot more recruiting talk throughout the season as I find more players. And I have a lot of other players on the board that I just haven't dedicated a lot of points to, so I'll be reallocating some things here. There are more players that I have found. But it's been a tougher recruiting season than we've seen in years past. We also have to get a kicker, and I'm trying to find the right kicker to be going after. So that is going to wrap up recruiting talk for today. In week 7, we're going to meet New Mexico in our yearly matchup where we face their high-powered option offense. They're ranked number 4 in the country, averaging just over 300 rushing yards per game. I never look forward to this matchup because I'm just not sure if our players are going to be ready for their style of offense. They always have a lot of speed and good quarterback and running backs. But with us coming off a very impressive win our last time out, I'm looking forward to the offense and hopefully another win for Kalispell. Thank you all for watching today's episode. Please let me know in the comments section who your favorite recruits for this season are, who could be the biggest difference makers for Kalispell in the next recruiting class. Please smash that like button and subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next episode against New Mexico soon. Have a great day, everybody.